Welcome to September 2024 at Gasper Cottage, which has been another terrible month of weather, but there have been the odd lovely day. And so these videos, the video was all done in one day, were taken on one of those glorious days. However, you are now finding out what Gasper Cottage is like midweek, uh, midday, Funny that I don't live in splendid isolation as I do when I'm normally videoing at six in the morning. You've got neighbours, you've got dogs, you've got husbands, you've got aeroplanes, you've got cars, you've got chainsaws, everything going on. But excitement, yes, I have taken the garden wall down there. I've got a new little bit of land and there's all sorts of exciting plans. More of that later. In the meantime, I think let's just enjoy what the garden does offer in September. And the asters, or symphotrichum, I think, as we're meant to call them, are fantastic. And this, this sort of lower growing one, Munch, is just a staple of the season. I've got it in lots of different areas of the garden, and it's just simply glorious. It's a really delicate, kind of mauvey blue, with that bright yellow boss. It doesn't pick very well, but it is gorgeous. And this is Apricotta Cosmos, which is a kind of weird bicolour, three colour, I suppose, um, apricot and pink. But surprisingly, it goes really well with those giant pinky purple dahlias. And this is just the view across the railway and out to that landscape, which you know, in September, yes, there has been a shift in the colour, but you're not. You're still in late summer, theoretically speaking. It hasn't felt like it, but you are. And there is that shift though. So as you go around the garden, you've got more seed heads, you've got more different things are starting to colour. That bright red is actually a, is the stems of the euphorbia. So they were bringing in a zingy yellow early, but uh, now they're all red. But these are the little flowers round the decking, the little borage flowers, very pretty. And then there's a little, little pink, Dianthus, I think it is of some sort, which, you know, the bees like. And there are lots and lots of berries and haws and all sorts of excitements. Um, and particularly on some of the wild roses, so this is the Rosa rugosa. Those are about the size of cherry tomatoes, which I think is quite impressive. Those are tiny wee things, but very, very vivid red. More aster. You know, and the aster there is a slightly smaller flower, but it's also pairing up very nicely with that um, Japanese anemone, whose name temporarily escapes me, but it's a very good pink colour. And each flower is tiny, but the mass of them is great. Now, this is me proving that I am no wildlife photographer, but Kevin was keeping me company on my go round the garden. And he's a very happy cat. He's definitely aging and slowing up, but he's still fast enough that I can't quite comfortably get him on camera. And definitely, David Attenborough's not gonna give me a call anytime soon, but it's nice to see him out enjoying the sunshine. The big curved border, the relationship between the colors of the flowers and the apples and the wall, offsetting the, the reds and the greens, just with those dots of the very pale whites and pinks through, it's lovely. The hotbed, uh, you know, it's dahlias, it's sunflowers. The sunflowers I use here is a series called Earthwalker, which has lots of different forms and sizes and colorways, but they're all kind of burnt orange, dark reds. Um, lovely, really tall, mainly multi-stem, sort of multi-head forms, which are slightly easier to place in the borders than the kind of really giant ones but there's still just that mass of color which as you get to the very end of september is so welcome people arrive and go oh, you've still got so much color in your garden and you know you plant dahlias and you still got color and it offsets so well against the clipped form of the little triangles and uh, the forms of the buildings this is at kind of the, around the back of the house and the contrast between the green and then now the grasses are starting to do that sort of silvery haze and the way the different shapes and seed heads interrelate. You've got 
three different kinds of grasses in that picture and you know, it's beautiful. Speaking of grasses, this year we have been scything the cutback of the grass in the orchard which has greatly eased the clearing up and is altogether a much more sympathetic and gentle process which we have enjoyed. Still hard work. <laughs>